So what actually happens in mentoring meetings? That is what we're going to address in this session. The objectives of this session are that by the end of it, you'll be able to assess the needs for the first mentoring meeting, practice the process of the first meeting, and compare and contrast the ways of conducting subsequent meetings. What is the way to get off to a productive start? In your first meeting with a client, you may want to consider these factors. It's worthwhile spending quite a bit of time building the relationship and creating rapport. Please see the session on creating rapport in the Mentoring and Basic Mentoring Skills module. You'll want to get to know your client quite well. You may want to ask about their hobbies and interests, past experience, career path, overall situation, including things outside of work or study or whatever context you are doing the mentoring in. And let them get to know you too. That's important. Then you may want to establish the big picture outcomes. By that I mean, what is the overall purpose of the mentoring? Perhaps it's to progress their career or to induct them into the organisation or support them through a role change. Whatever it is, it's useful to agree and set the overall outcomes for the whole of the mentoring experience. Once you've done that, then you can start aligning expectations. We've already looked at expectations, but this is the time where you'll want to find out what they're expecting from the relationship at the moment, what they're expecting and aligning any areas where this differs. For example, it's quite common for clients to say that they're expecting the mentor to give them the solutions to their problems, and your expectation is that you are there to help them find their own answers it would be important to align this at the first meeting. Once the expectations have been sorted out, then you can start to agree on how you can work together in the best way to help the client. What way do they learn the best? What things could you do to help them the most? What ways do you like to work, etc.? The next part is to contract with your client. We looked at this in the second session of this module. So you'll want to agree all the details of the mentoring program, including practical things like when you will meet, how often, for how long, and how you will contact each other, etc. Then you may want to look at the big picture outcomes and start to prioritise them. Which are the most important? Which will have the greatest impact on the person right now? And you can then start to put together an agenda for these meetings. These may change as time goes on and that's fine, but at least you have a basis of a plan. If there is time in this meeting, then you can start working on one of the priorities. Here is an exercise to help you put your learning into practice. Draw up a plan for the first meeting with your next new client. Maybe it is your first new client. Then carry out the first meeting with your client and record how it went. What went really well and how did you know? What would you like to do further work on and how would you know that? How will you approach it differently next time? So what happens in subsequent meetings then? Well, normally you'll re-establish rapport and the more you get to know the client, the less time this usually takes. Next, you'll want to talk to your client about what they've done since the last meeting, what has happened as a result of their action and then what they would like to work through in this meeting. And so you'll agree the agenda and the outcomes. Then you'll work through the agenda with them and we'll consider how you do this next and in the following sessions. Then you'll want to help your client action plan and finally, it's often useful to review the effectiveness of the meeting. What's been helpful? What was not so helpful? Do you want to change anything about how you're working together? This model is from David Clutterbuck and covers the basics for conducting a mentoring meeting. First he talks about establishing a relaxed yet business-like atmosphere. This goes back to something we discussed earlier about boundaries and that is to decide what sort of relationship is going to work best and where the boundaries will be. Clutterbuck suggests a business-like atmosphere. 
then to gain consensus on the purpose of the meeting. What is the agenda going to be? Then to explore the issues from the client's perspective. This is important because it is about exploring it from the client's model of the world. And in order to do that, you may want to clarify and elucidate on the situation, to challenge assumptions that they're making that may be stopping them from moving forward, to stimulate analysis by the client of the situation, and to draw on your own experience and maybe offer some learnings from that. From all of that, Clutterbuck says that you will want to build confidence and motivation, agree options to consider, and then agree actions on both sides. And finally, you'll want to summarise and, if appropriate, outline the agenda for the next meeting. This model is used by Pegg in his book The Art of Mentoring, although the model's origins are unclear. It's one that is commonly used in mentoring workshops. First of all is to consider the challenge that the client wants to address. Then get them to think about the choices and options that are open to them. Then get them to consider the consequences of each of the choices. What are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of each option? And then from the options to decide on a creative solution. And finally to ensure that the client is committed to the action and the decision that they've made. Here is an exercise to help you put your learning into practice again. Compare and contrast three models for carrying out mentoring meetings. Then carry out a subsequent meeting with your client and record how it went. What went really well and how do you know? What would you like to do further work on and how do you know that? How will you approach it differently next time?